Virtual Desktop is the best way to play wireless PC VR games on your Oculus Quest or Oculus Quest 2. In this video, I'm going to take you through all the steps and everything that you require to play wirelessly on your Quest 2. Now, if you have any issues with this setup, check out our Discord, link in the description below, and someone there will hopefully help you out. Alternatively, you can check us out on Twitch on Wednesday and Friday nights from 6pm GMT if you want to chat anything VR and hopefully get that problem solved for you. What do you need in order to play games wirelessly? Well, you're going to need a VR ready PC. To check if your PC is suitable for playing virtual reality games, check out the Steam VR Performance Checker. This will give you a good benchmark to see if your computer is good enough to do this. Even if it does come in in the benchmark, it may struggle with some of the higher end games, so it's good to be a bit above the minimum that is required. You'll need an Ethernet cable for your computer. Now this is very important. Your computer cannot be connected to Wi-Fi, otherwise your speed and performance will be very poor. You need to be connected with Ethernet, preferably straight into your router. You need a Wi-Fi router that has a 5 GHz band, not 2.4 on its own, you need a 5 GHz band. A copy of Virtual Desktop purchased on the Oculus Quest Store. This is important, make sure it's purchased on the Quest Store and not on Steam. Your Oculus Quest also has to be side loaded. If you do not know what side loading is and you have not side loaded your Quest, check out the link above. That'll be a video, a simple tutorial on how to side load your Oculus Quest. Finally, you'll need Virtual Desktop Streamer for your computer. Step one, purchase Virtual Desktop on the Oculus Store and get that downloaded. Before we launch this, there's various settings that we need to go through to make sure you have the right settings on your network and for Virtual Desktop itself to work properly. For the next stage, you're going to need your Oculus Quest side loaded. So if you have not side loaded your Quest yet, make sure you check out how to side load. Step two, once you've installed Virtual Desktop on your Quest, you'll need to go to your computer and open up SideQuest. In SideQuest, search for Virtual Desktop and then click on Install to Headset. This will then side load Virtual Desktop onto your headset. If you do not do this, Virtual Desktop will work. However, you will not be able to play games in virtual reality, which is the whole point and why we're doing this. Step three, your network and router setup. Now, it's very important for this to make sure that your router has a 5 gigahertz band. If it does not, you're not going to be doing very well with virtual reality wirelessly. It would be really in your favour to look for a Wi-Fi router that has 5 gigahertz. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to separate all the devices on your network. The only device you want on your 5 gigahertz bandwidth is your Oculus Quest. All other devices you want on the 2.4 gigahertz band. If you have any other devices on the 5 GHz band, this will massively affect your performance, so we highly recommend only having your Oculus Quest on the 5 GHz band. 5 GHz gives you a better speed than the 2.4 GHz band, however at a smaller distance. So for this, you're going to want to be as close to your router as possible. Walls can interfere with the signal, so try to be in the same room as your router if possible. The easiest way to separate your devices on your network would be to set up a separate SSID name for your 5 gigahertz band. For example, for me, all I've done is take my Wi-Fi router name and add a 5 to the end so I know that that's 5 gigahertz band. If you change the name of this, all devices that are on your network should automatically then go to the 2.4 gigahertz band because that's the details it is logged into. And then you can just simply connect your quest to the 5 gigahertz band and you know that will be the only thing on there. In order to change the name of your Wi-Fi network, you will need to go to your browser and log into your router settings. Now, this is different for everyone. You may need to go to Google to find out the IP address for your specific brand of router because each make has a different number that you will need to type into your browser. Once you've got these details and logged in, have a look at your Wi-Fi settings. You may need to go into advanced settings is where I have found it and you can change the name of your network in here. For more advanced users, you could change your channel to one that's a bit less congested, but in order to do this, you will need to get yourself a Wi-Fi network analyzer tool. Step four is to download the virtual desktop streamer. Now, this is really simple. Just go to the link and you will be able to download this here for Windows or for Mac. Once you have downloaded this, check out the top left. In here, you will need to enter your Oculus username, otherwise it won't be able to connect properly. For the preferred codec on your first time, you can keep this in automatic. This is really going to depend on what hardware you have as to what works best for you. So a little bit of trial and error will be needed here. Step five, open virtual desktop on your headset finally. And we're going to be changing some of the settings in here to be best set up for you. Once you've opened up virtual desktop on your quest, you should be able to see your computer. If not, make sure it's turned on and connected to the ethernet. It is connected to your network. 
on the top left of the screen, you should see that it's connected to the five gigahertz band that we've just been talking about. If you see it saying 2.4 here, then you'll need to make sure that your Oculus Quest has been changed to the five gigahertz band. Now, as you can see here, my connection is not great. That is because my ethernet is not directly into the router due to the setup of my house, but it works good enough for me at the moment. Now let's take a look at these settings. I would advise for your first attempt to put it onto medium quality for the environmental settings. This can obviously go up or down. This will depend on the hardware that you are running. I personally have gone for the 90 frames per second due to my PC specs, but you can stick to the standard Quest 72. If you want to use your microphone in this, make sure that you allow the microphone pass through in that little checkbox. It isn't enabled by default, so if you are wanting to talk to your friends, make sure you tick that box. Now let's go into the streaming settings. For this, I'd recommend starting with your virtual reality quality at medium. You can obviously adjust this afterwards depending on the quality that you get out of this. For most users, I would also suggest to turn off the sliced encoding. When you're getting started out, I would recommend turning on the performance overlay. This is just so that if you have any issues when you're playing, you can narrow down what your issue is and then find out a solution for yourself. Everyone's issues may be a little bit different, so it's good to know what is causing the issue, whether it's your network or your computer. Now that you've got the basic settings set up for that, let's actually go and launch a game and see how well it performs. Grab your left hand controller and press on the menu button if you cannot see the menu in virtual desktop and this will bring up all the settings for you. In here you should see a tab called games and when you click on this it should give you a list of all the games that are installed on your computer. So feel free to go and pick one and see how well the quality is. You can obviously do the games through Steam VR as well, however there can be some issues with this so please do it through the game settings in virtual desktop rather than using Steam. Something that is important to note is you only have a two hour return window on the Oculus Store. So if you open up Virtual Desktop and it is running like hot garbage and you can't figure it out, you only have two hours to try and figure out how to solve your personal issues with this. So if it's running really badly, you might want to look into refunding it as it doesn't work for everyone, but you may just have a little simple issue that you can get done in time or you don't mind not refunding it. But I imagine if it doesn't work for you, you're gonna to want to try and get a refund. Now, everyone's experience on virtual desktop varies wildly. Some find it perfect, just exactly the same as the Oculus Link cable, whereas others find it pretty terrible and unusable. Personally, for me, when I started out, it was unusable. I had a specific fault and I managed to figure out how to solve that, I'm doing a little video on that later on. I don't have the perfect setup for it. I am not in the same room as my Wi-Fi router and I can't have my ethernet directly plugged into my router. However, it works good enough for me in most things. It is not as good as the Oculus Link, but it's passable if I ever feel like not playing with the Oculus Link cable. Now, if you're having any issues with the setup or this, or you're having issues specifically with virtual desktop, you've got yourself set up, but the quality isn't that great, feel free to jump into our Discord and ask for some help there. I'll be happy to help you out. Leave a little comment below. I'll try and help you the best I can. Or jump over to our Twitch on Wednesdays and Fridays from 6pm and someone will hopefully help you out there. Thank you for watching. Our channel has lots of other virtual reality videos and coming soon there'll be more videos in in depth in virtual desktop fixing some of those issues for yourself and some reviews from games coming forward in 2021. If you found this video helpful please like and subscribe it really makes a difference. Thank you for watching see you later.